Hello there everybody, my name is Waddles and welcome back to the Minecraft Guide episode 88. You may think that I forgot the Ocean Monument Farm, uh, maybe you were wondering that, maybe you even commented that on the last episode, and if you commented that, you are a correct person. <laughs> I forgot about it last episode. Whoops, that's my bad. Uh, today's episode is going to be all about lighting, but we actually have a little bit of work to do over on this build, and I need to talk about what I did in between episodes. So you can see that I have all of my sand walls all the way around this ocean monument, and I actually did that all on Twitch. Big shout out to those of you who came over and said hi and asked me questions during that stream. It was really, really fun, and I definitely am going to do that again really really soon my twitch is twitch.tv slash waddles it's linked down in the description you should go drop a follow if you'd like to catch this world live and in action so that's that now this project to catch those of you guys up who maybe missed something we're making an ocean monument farm step one put walls all the way around the farm or, or the monument that thing <laughs> uh, now we've done that so after that I need to place a wall four or three blocks out from one of the end walls and this is a new part I didn't talk about this yet but I, I place a wall down just like I've done here now I need to come in with some dried out sponges so these things and drain this strip after that, we need to move the wall, or place another wall, do it again, then move this wall, and just keep doing it all the way until this area is drained. So, yeah, it's a project. <laughs> now, I am going to be doing this probably on Twitch again, but we'll do the first section live on, on video, not live. Basically, what you want to do is start at one end and place a sponge like a block or two below the water, then pick a wall and place a sponge again a block or two below the water near where the water is falling uh, over and over and over again to remove all of the water. The water will slowly lower down, uh, but surely lower down. It's, it's absolutely going away. <laughs> um, it's a long process. This process is even longer than placing the walls. Uh, yeah, like, again, if uh, you're doing this, I hope I hope you realize you you've made a long commitment. <laughs> it, it's totally your call. You could place the sponges and then uh, remove them after you're placing them, like I'm doing, or you could just place them all and then remove them later. It, it's yeah, 100% your choice. But I like to do it this way because then I don't have to parkour around on the sponges and try and pick them up. Yeah, uh, that's kind of annoying. So. I am team, remove the sponges as you go. Uh, you could also dry them out as you do this. Unfortunately, not in the nether. That's a 1.15 thing. But, uh, yeah. So, I'm gonna go ahead and finish draining this section just so I can kind of show you guys what's up. And then, after that, uh, we're going to move on to today's actual episode topic. And a little bit of time later, this whole section has now been drained, which is good, but it also means I need to light it up now because while I'm over here like working at nighttime, mob spawns are going to happen down there and that is going to be a problem. But after you finish one section of this thing like I've done, you will need to make another wall, uh, either three or four blocks out again, so I'll do four, and go all the way across, drain the area, then we can actually tear this wall down and kind of like replace it over here and basically complete the thing or, or um, repeat the process until this whole thing is complete. You will need to go inside of the ocean monument and drain the thing as well, but that's actually pretty easy compared to doing all of this. But usually I say that for the last step because it is the easiest um, draining thing and I like the idea of an easy end. So we go through all of the hard stuff first. So... Yep, that's that. That's all that works. And now it's time for me to abandon, I, I think, all of the scaffolding here, all of my sponge here so this can dry out, and then head over to our base. I'm going to leave the sand here too. Uh, but we have to go over to the base now for the next part, the main part of today's episode. So, back at home, I have a zombie, and this is the perfect setup for today's episode. Today, we're going to go over mob spawns and how you can eliminate them with light creatively. Not, not just like boring, throw torches on the ground, no, that's bad. Uh, creative. 
When I was taking a look back at the episodes and things that we've covered so far, I realized that I never really covered mob spawning and ways to block it and stop it from happening really in, in much depth at all, so that's the focus of today. Now, uh, first we need to start with, I think, mob spawning in defining it and breaking it down in general. So, mob spawning. W what is mob spawning? Mob spawning is basically the mechanic that the game uses to bring other creatures into the world. So basically, how cows keep appearing, how creepers appear at night, how zombies appear, all of that type of stuff. Now we are focusing on the hostile mobs, the bad mobs, basically the things that want to hurt you. Now there are actually a few rules that the game has to follow when it comes to mob spawning. First, the distance rule. Mobs cannot spawn within 24 blocks of the player. That creates sort of a little safe bubble and prevents creepers from like doing crazy things like spawning right in front of you and then blowing up. But mobs will also not spawn really, really, really far away from you. So for example, like the Ocean Monument, uh, there are definitely not mobs spawning there anymore. The Guardians are definitely gone because we're really far from it. So yeah, we don't have to worry about super, super far out areas. Now, after the distance rule, we have something known as the block rule. There has to be a valid block for a mob to spawn on. Now, mobs can spawn on almost everything in Minecraft, but not everything. Valid blocks include grass blocks, wood blocks, cobblestone and other stone blocks, wool blocks, but they don't include things like leaf blocks, things like staircases, slabs on the lower half, those don't work for mob spawning, or blocks occupied by certain types of things like buttons. Mobs can't spawn on a block with a button on it, they can't spawn on a block with carpet on it, with, or with string on it. Now, that's not everything, but there's just a few examples examples. After the block thing, then there's the last big condition, and that is lighting. The light level of a block needs to be below 7 or 8 if you're a zombie, we'll talk about that in a minute, uh, for a mob to actually spawn. So you can find your light level out by checking your F3 screen. Sorry, Bedrock players. <laughs> the information we're looking for can be found in the middle chunk of information, five rows down. The row that we need starts with client light. So for us, we can see the client light on uh, this block right here is 14, then parentheses 14 sky for block. Uh, the information that we need here is the four block part. That means this block has a light level of four um, when, when the sun's not around, and that's a big, big problem, because that means mobs can spawn right here, and I know for a fact mobs spawn there, I see it all the time, it's dangerous, like creepers surprise me, see as the nighttime happens, it's gonna get dark in there, and that's what we need to work around and get rid of. The goal by the end of the episode is to hopefully have all of the areas around here, especially in this forest out there, eliminated when it comes to mob spawns. We need to make it nice and bright. Now the reason hostile mob spawns happen at nighttime and not the daytime is because of the sun. The Minecraft sun lights the whole world up and makes it really, really bright. Now I've done a pretty good job when it comes to lighting up the builds that we have done, but I've done an absolutely terrible job of lighting up the area around us, like the forest out there, that is really dark. Um, the, the forest even on that island, that's really dark, so that all needs to change. So, TLDR, I, by the way, I don't know what that means. If, if somebody could tell me, that would be great. I've been wondering for years. But TLDR on mob spawning. For a mob to spawn, you need to have a valid block. It needs to be dark. And it needs to be a little bit of a ways away from a player. But not too far away. So now eliminating mob spawns in beautiful ways. Uh, players can of course use torches to block spawns, but torches are horrendous. These are scary, one of the worst looking things in Minecraft. Of course not the worst thing. Uh, that is held by something else, but but it, they're just not that, that good looking at all. <laughs> now with the mechanics and everything like that out of the way, let's talk about actually lighting up your world. I have a lot of different tricks up my sleeve here because lighting is something that honestly I feel like I'm a little bit of an expert in, not to brag or anything. I've just done a lot of mob farms, and, and mob farms, unfortunately, usually require hours of placing things and lighting things up, and yep, usually not the most exciting thing. So I think what we're going to do is go kind of like thing by thing. Thing. For example, the jack-o'-lantern is our first thing, so we'll talk about some tricks with that, then we'll move on to another one. These are in no particular order other than by, like, item. 
So, trick number one, the jack-o'-lantern. Jack-o'-lanterns are actually insanely useful for doing lighting because they are so cheap. I mean, you set yourself up a decent-sized automatic pumpkin farm like what we have, and you are set for pretty much ever. Trick number one, the pumpkin patch trick. Place a jack-o'-lantern down, then place a few plain pumpkins, that's what these things are, to create little clusters of pumpkins. Now, the jack-o'-lanterns, so like this one right here, you can tell by the coloring, jack-o'-lanterns are a little lighter, but the jack-o'-lanterns in these clumps will actually light up the area around them while the other pumpkins will basically hide the jack-o'-lantern's bright shiny carved face and make things look a little bit better. I find that this technique works really, really well in forests because, I mean, forests are so plain and, and green and brown everywhere and that's really boring to look at, so if you add in some pumpkin patches, things will look actually a, a little more alive, a little more nice, a little more colorful. So pumpkin patches in maybe forests or also plains. This works really well in a plains biome. Next, the carpet trick. This is one of my favorite ones. I've been doing this thing for pretty much as long as I've been playing Minecraft and as long as this stuff has been a thing, but uh, place a jack-o'-lantern one deep into the ground like this, then place a green carpet over it and then there you go you have your lighting kind of blended into the grass this works better in some biomes than it does in others like in the swamp this does not blend in very well but this one is a lot more subtle instead of having giant pumpkins everywhere we have just little pieces of carpet on the ground it looks a little weird but if you can get used to it it's not really that big of a deal to me it's better to have no mobs in an area than it is to have like a little bit of random carpets it's, it's seriously just not that big of a deal to me at least but this one works really really well when you have a lot of land to light up sure pumpkin patches are pretty and all but are they that efficient no because you're blocking the jack-o'-lantern with other pumpkins so the light's not really spreading as efficiently as it could this however is very very efficient carpets actually let light pass straight through them so they are amazing for something like this Unfortunately, this trick does not work very well in hilly areas though because uh, if you try to do this on a hill, you're going to see the side of the pumpkin or you'll end up with something like what I have here with which is basically a jack-o'-lantern wearing a green hat. <laughs> like Jacksepticeye, I, I, I don't know. Jack-o'-lantern tip number three. I think the final one, at least for now, is this thing over here. This is a bush with lighting below it. Leaves behave just like carpet does when it comes to light. Leaves will actually let light straight through them so you can place lighting underneath these leaves and then have your area lit up. Now this trick and then the carpet one actually both work with glowstone sea lanterns and other things as well but I usually use jack-o'-lanterns for these things because they are the cheapest by far like by a lot a lot a lot. So now, let's go ahead and take off. That's it for the pumpkins for now. Let's go over to the river and talk about the wonderful, the majestic, the green, the squishy sea pickle. Uh, um, sea pickles are absolutely amazing for lighting up an area. Now, uh, if you didn't know, yeah, sea pickles do actually give off some light, which is pretty cool. The other cool thing about sea pickles is you can actually kind of control how much light they are letting off. One sea pickle lets off a little bit of light, two, a little more, three, a little more, and then four, the most ever. So if you're trying to light up an area with sea pickles, definitely go for clumps of four. Now you can place these clumps pretty much all over your rivers, oceans, anything like that, and drown spawns can be effectively halted. But if you're really trying to get rid of drown spawns, you might need to kind of go overkill, so don't worry about it too much. Usually when it comes to blocking spawns and, and working on mob farms and things like that, uh, river spawns and water spawns aren't that big of a deal. The, it just, it doesn't happen all that much, and these kinds of spawns won't really hurt the rates of your farm unless you're on bedrock. Sorry again, bedrock players. I... I, I'm, I'm sorry, it's not my fault. <laughs> so over here is a fully lit up river with only sea pickles. The area looks so bright, and in my opinion, sea pickles look really, really good as well. They just blend in so, so nicely. So if you like the look of these things, and if you're trying to also spice up your rivers and, and just water and make it look a little bit better, try placing some sea pickles. Uh, this area 
definitely need some work though. Um, so we didn't see that part, okay? <laughs> but we are actually not done with the sea pickle tricks. So let's go ahead and go back over to the sea pickle farm where it all started, at least with the sea pickles, and talk about this other trick. So if you have like a beach area, this one works really, really well. So uh, here's my beach area, looks cool, looks nice. And then in these puddles, I actually have sea pickles hidden. So sea pickles are bright, they let off light. Um, Oh no, where is the demon? Where is the demon, baby? Ah, uh, demon, baby, you are... No, 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 stand back. Anyways, sea pickles are bright and they let off light. This light actually can reach over to the land if you place these sea pickles near land. So if you have a beachy or a swampy type of area, place some puddles in the ground, of course, just water buckets, and then place some sea pickles inside of those puddles to light up the areas around the puddle. Uh, up here, there is no lighting other than the sea pickles and spawns will not happen in here. It is brighter than seven, so we're good. Now, one final sea pickle trick. If you like to terraform and you like to add waterfalls into your world like I do, don't forget that you can place sea pickles down in these waterfalls and then your waterfall will be nice and bright. You can also place sea pickles at the top of them, but you'll see them then and I don't really want to see them. I think that would look weird there, so I've kind of hid them down into the ground. I think it looks a little bit better like that. Next, let's talk about city posts really quick. So when I was going ahead and setting up the lighting in this area, I actually built a few new posts over here to make things feel a little bit more like a city. I'm not 100% sold on them, but I think they look pretty nice. I threw them together pretty quickly. So uh, we'll go over here and take a look at this one. So it looks like the light is coming from the top of this post, but there's a trick. The lighting is actually coming from a jack-o'-lantern that is hidden down here. So uh, why would you want to do this? Well, uh, because this lantern up here is actually not lighting up as much land as possible. To effectively light up a space, you want your lighting as close to being on the ground as possible. That's why we're doing this here. Trapdoors are just like carpets and leaves. They will let light straight through them so you can place something that is illuminating something behind some trapdoors and then you're actually good to go. Creating light posts like these ones is pretty straightforward, but we'll go ahead and make another one just in case you are kind of in the dark on how to build one of these things. So uh, where could we put one? Mm, probably here, this would be a good spot. So we'll go ahead and remove that and then grab a jack-o'-lantern. Place that down, then go ahead and grab some trapdoors. The trapdoors need to go all the way around the jack-o'-lantern because otherwise we're going to have the orange showing through and that's a little intense. After placing your trap doors, go ahead and place some sort of block. I like to do stone bricks or mossy stone bricks because they're one of my favorite blocks, but you could really do anything. If you're building in like a desert, maybe do sandstone or even the cool creeper face sandstone. If you're building in, say, just like a town, you could even try using terracotta. After that, though, place some fences or some walls. You could place um, like the new stone brick walls on here and that would look really good, but I'm not doing that because there's a lot of gray in here already. We have that there, we have it over there, we have it over here. So I think using spruce wood switches things up a little bit in this area and adds more color. But there we go, that's how we build this thing, and then the actual lighting is coming from down here, but we do technically have this as well, so this area is going to be insanely bright, which is obviously good. Now, while we're talking about city paths and city lighting, let's talk about this trick as well. For this one, you are going to want to have either glowstone or sea lanterns because the lighting will actually be visible. Grab glowstone or sea lanterns, then grab a piece of gray stained glass or light gray stained glass and head out to your road. This is going to work best with a gray path like what we have here. Somewhere in your path, uh, dig two blocks down. So one and then two, just like that. Place a glowstone, then place your glass on top of it, and there you go. This is a creative way to light up a path that looks pretty nice, but it's just not the vibe I'm going for here, so I'm going to go ahead and remove it, but use that trick to your advantage. Uh, whenever you're doing roads and paths, you can try out different color glasses if you want, like maybe... I don't know, like a cyan one, but uh, it'll stand out more. So if you want it to stand out, so if you want it to blend in, then don't do that. So those are just a few city lighting tricks. Now let's go ahead and talk about 
Of course, we have to. The absolutely beautiful looking campfire. Minecraft 1.14 added campfires into the game, and you should definitely not forget about these things as a source of lighting. They look really, really good and let off a lot of light. And then, I guess, bonus uh, here, you can cook at these things, so if you need like a random furnace for some reason, then you have a campfire. I find that random just campfires that are kind of un decorated if you will fit really well in terraformed areas like this one here i think that just looks so so nice if you have a bit more of a structured area try placing some trap doors around the campfire this creates more of like a burning barrel or like the, an actually structured thing instead of just a random campfire any trap doors will really work for this it just depends on what colors are in your build area now uh, you can go ahead and place that little I guess, um, burning camp thing up on a building for even more fanciness. That's what we did on the storage building way back when, when we built the thing, and I still absolutely love this trick. It looks like a fancy, like, lantern, like an even cooler, more realistic lantern. Overall, campfires have a lot of uses, just mess around with them, you can place blocks below them like what I did actually over here on this one. I have a little bit of oak wood below it, you could even pop the campfire up one block, place the oak wood higher, the trapdoors higher, so basically it's like literally sitting on the ground, and you have like a fancy raised campfire, but just definitely don't forget about campfires, they are really, really nice for lighting up areas. And so, I think we've actually been going right through almost all of my lighting tips, but we have one final really big one that I did heavily, heavily, heavily over in this area here. So, uh, lanterns are absolutely beautiful. If you uh, didn't see this one coming, well, um, it's here now. The lantern is amazing if you are feeling a little lazy and you need an area lit up. And if you have a lot of iron like I have, my iron farm is still running and it is amazing then go ahead and place some lanterns. Lanterns are actually a little brighter than torches too, which is really, really cool. Now, I probably went a little overkill in here with the lanterns. There's a lot, but mobs aren't gonna spawn in here, that's for sure. <laughs> I actually found uh, some creeper holes here. I think we probably lost some golem soldiers there in the great fight, so sorry, iron golems. They're spawning like crazy over here, by the way, because of her village inside of there, but lanterns are really, really useful for lighting up areas in your worlds, whether it be uh, a field in a forest or even somewhere a little more structured like in a city-type environment. I find that lanterns look really, really nice placed alongside paths. They kind of look like Maybe somebody's like leading the way to something and just lighting up the road. Lanterns work pretty much everywhere because they just look so, so good. You can even place lanterns on your roofs like what I did on the library if you're having spawning issues there. Now I did this trick in actually a few different places in the world because spawns on roofs are kind of tricky and definitely annoying. I did the lantern trick over here on this mob farm storage building as well to stop spawns because spawns were happening a lot on this thing. But I think that just about does it for the mob spawning trick talk that we have in today's episode. It was really different. I know how I did things. I thought it would be best to kind of just get it in and then go from thing to thing instead of like cutting it up a bunch. But uh, let me know what you think. Did you like this style of episode or did you not really and you'd rather have um, the other ones? By the way, finally put lighting under this carpet here. Finally. <laughs> uh, I, I get around to these things eventually. So sadly, Robert is still missing, but we have to carry on anyways. We need to do the comment of the day because it is very, very important. So Today's comment of the day is from Baby Eye. The comment reads, Hey Waddles, you should do an ender chest guide. It'd be very helpful. Thank you very much for the idea. I really like it. And honestly, I, I felt like that was the perfect comment for today's episode because it's about a, a relatively basic game mechanic that I actually forgot about. So in this guide series, I've been having a lot of fun, but I also have been still kind of working on learning this whole format. It's a little bit different than a normal Let's Play series, you know, so it, it's different. Whenever we do another guide world, probably sometime in the future, maybe soon, maybe not, I think I will be going into basic game mechanics like what we did today a little bit more because I honestly didn't realize how many new players are still coming to Minecraft nowadays. It's crazy, especially this past summer. It was wild, so yeah, um, that's a thing that I plan on doing better in the future, and 
Um, uh-huh. <laughs> uh, thank you really, uh, really very much for that idea, though. I love that idea, and maybe I'll do that. It's not off the books for this series quite yet, uh, but I feel like at this point in the series, I should be doing, like, crazy things, and uh, I just spent a whole episode talking about lights, so <laughs> I don't know. But uh, I actually want to do one more thing here before we end the episode. I keep forgetting to update the map, and... Uh, we have a lot of new things, like this, uh, we got the sea pickle and the turtle on it now. Uh, what else? Hmm. I mean, I should probably update all of these because I have the lighting in, and, yeah, that kind of shows up on the map. Uh, carpets are invisible, by the way, on maps. Um... Uh, I guess those are lanterns everywhere. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I have a little bit of map updating to do in between episodes, but... I think next episode is going to be a big one, so get ready, oh boy, and I will see you in that episode. I'd like to send a special thank you to my wonderful patron, Guy on Moose, today. Thank you for the support, Guy, I really appreciate it, and completely unrelated to that, I am missing my pet cat, Robert. We need to find Robert soon. Um, it just feels empty inside of this storage room without Robert. Um, anyways, like, subscribe. Patrons get these episodes early. Link to the Patreon down below. Waddles merch, Twitch TV, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, everyone.